Here in payroll, we have forms that are required to be submitted to the various organizations. The first that we will look at is Form 941. This form with John Granatelli is found on page 3-22 in the text. Recognizing that for this, we need to make some adaptations because the rules for 2012 have Social Security at 4.2% for the employee, 6.2% for the employer. So we'll need to adapt this form as a result. First, I just want to talk of what are we going to see on this quarterly report. Because it is quarterly, it must be submitted four times during the year. And for this, the first part of this information is for the employer, the company information. Another piece that we have is to indicate which quarter is this information relevant. And in the text, they have this marked for the fourth quarter. And that shows right here. Now, I wanted to point out that typically the information for 941 is already filled out when the company receives it. The only exceptions would be for those that are just starting off. In the text on page 322, it points that we have uh, 26 employees, so I just took that and carried it on here. Now, I wanted to point out that as we see here on line 5A, where we have our taxable Social Security wages, the tax is not 12.4% or 0.124 with 6.2% for the employee and 6.2% for the employer. They are matching dollars that are taxed but not rate for 2012. Instead, we have 4.2% for the employee, 6.2% for the employer, so that we have 10.4% or 0 .104. Now the information that's given in the text, I took that and adapted it so that we could have a clue. Where is this number, this information coming from? So I looked back and typically a company would have payroll information that accumulates the totals for each of the quarters. And so that's what I have created here just using hypothetical information that we have. And the totals that I had found on that Form 941 in the text. The adaptation that I had to have was right here with my OASDI tax, that it's at 4.2%. So I, I needed to make a change and we'll need to make a change as it shows correctly on our 941 for year 2012. So my at OASDI tax right there is this quarterly wages times that 4.2%. Uh, uh, we recognize that doing it off of the total is not exactly right. We would have withheld from our employees and potentially then that withholding would be a few cents off from the actual calculating on the total due to rounding errors or uh, rounding issues, I should say. For the HI tax, OASDI was at 4.2%, HI tax at 1.45%. This federal income tax, I just uh, took that from the line three in our text because that would not have changed. The rules uh, were in place for this with our text. Total deductions as a result with these as the only deductions for net pay. So that would appear as one of the reports that is generated within the HR department in relation to our payroll. So then I took that information just so that we could work forward or move forward with 
the reports and how to show it on the forms. So again, we'll be doing a adaptation of from what's in the textbook. Uh, so this OASDI that I got right here was uh, taking this information right here and adjusting it to seven pay periods because I noticed that that example in the text was for every two weeks the employees got paid. So it is bi-weekly. I did the same for the OASDI and the HI. Notice for this with the employer's tax, I did a calculation based off of this figure and then rounded it. And this here is at 4.2% and this has to be at 6.2%. The employee's FICA is 1.45% as is that for the employer. And then the, eight, the employee's FIT tax would be based on the employee and how much they had earned for the period and how many allowances they have, and then taking it to the wage bracket method or our percentage method. So it's with this information that we'll be going back into our Form 941. As we see in the text, pay, uh, line two asks for what are the total wages for the period, and this is the total wages that we have for the period. So I'll take that back into my Form 941. Notice with this, we've got a decimal point, so I need to put the pennies or the cents on the right-hand side of that. The balance of the dollars is 74895. Notice there is no comma in that. The income tax that was withheld is the total that appears on that payroll report. So here's the total for our federal income tax, 12372.13. Keeping in mind that the pennies goes to the right of that decimal sign with the 12372 to the left of the decimal with no comma. Oh, excuse me. Our to taxable security wages, no employee has at this point capped out at the $10,100. So our taxable Social Security wages is the same that we have on line two. Notice we've got our pennies and our 74895. And it's that total times our 10.4% total tax. Notice this includes both the employee liability and the employer liability. 30, let's see, I'll do my pennies first. Two, nine, and now my dollars. Three, one, four, five, six. Three, one, four, five, six. If doing this manually, either with a typewriter or with a a pen or pencil, pen, I guess, or using a computer where you're typing that information in, no commas. For our taxable Medicare wages and tips, all wages are taxed. So we have our 92. Scroll this up just a little. There we go. 92. 74895.92 and that 2 point uh, that point oh two nine one point four five percent for the employee one point four five percent for the employer so two point nine percent for 
as we see here as a decimal. So that amount would be 1089, oh, excuse me, 85. Excuse me, that total is not right. It is the 2171.98. The number that I was reading was the employee portion only. And I'm thinking that's what I have up here on this line too. So. Whoops, I just noticed that I had uh, copied the number incorrectly for this line. It's way too high. Uh, 74895.92 times 1, .104 is 7789.18. So then the next piece that we have in the midst of this now, well, I guess I should point out that the, the pieces of this that I'm getting from that payroll report, and I'll, just, I'll flip over to that. So here's my payroll report. The piece that I get for this is the quarterly wages right here and my federal income tax right here. I can't take this OASDI amount right here because I need both employee and employer. And that's not what shows on that line. What shows on that line is only the employee portion of that. And the same with my HI tax. What I need to show on the form is the employee and employer, but what I'm showing here is only the employee portion of that. So, with that in mind, I need to do the simple calculation. Whatever those total taxable wages are on this line times that percentage gives me that total liability for ta tax, Social Security tax. The same with the Medicare. It's simply a calculation as to this is what I estimate it's going to be according to the total wages that I have. So the next piece that we have is box 5D where it asks us to add column 2 for these items right here. So when we add 7789.18 and 2171.98, answer 9961.16. Now, line 5E, line 6A, 6B, 6C, 6E, or D, as they have there, uh, D are going to be blank. So the next one that we come down to is right here in 6A where it asks us what are the total taxes before we have any adjustments but now we're going to be including this with our FIT and this with our OASDI and our HI. So those added together give us a total of and it's with that information that we've got the first lines calculated according to what it would appear based on the totals that we had for our taxable wages. And going back then to our payroll report that we would have, 
it is these two items that we've used so far to create the information on this Form 941. Of course, there's the rest of the form, so we'll be using another video to talk through those lines.